Hi again, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Charger 360, telling the stories of the University of New Haven. I'm J.W. Stewart, along with Bruce Barber. Bruce, good to see you. Good to see you, J.W. Our guest on the show today is an old friend going back to the Dr. Z and J.W. podcast days. It's Mario Gabbery, who's the dean of the Henry C. Lee College of Criminal Justice and Forensic Sciences. Mario, welcome to the new rebranded Charger 360. Thank, thank you. Podcast for the 21st century. Podcast, a little different than what you and me and Dr. Z did. Yeah. We were kind of in our own houses there during the pandemic. Yeah, it was yes. in the pandemic. Uh, I heard that uh, you spoke for an hour together, yeah. and I was jealous. I was a little jelly, and so I demanded, <laughs> we need Mario on Charger 360, and lo and behold. Lo and behold, we only got 15 minutes. Yep, let's I'll go. talk fast. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so much. Yeah, we have a lot right? to get to. Uh, Mario, when he was on the show a few years ago, he was the, uh, the interim provost. Again, we mentioned Dean of the Henry C. Lee College of Criminal Justice and Forensic Sciences. Mario, tell us about where you're from and your path to the, to the University of New Haven. All right, well, so I'm born and raised in Connecticut, Fairfield County. And uh, this is my 30th year uh, at the University of New Haven. So I started when I was uh, still in uh, private law practice and I was contacted by the person who was the dean at the time. It was actually a brand new school at the time. It wasn't even a college. And he asked if I wanted to come and teach part-time, which I did for a couple of years. And then I decided I liked, uh, liked the University of New Haven. And uh, here I am, 30 years later. And the Lee College is really, it's, amazing, nationally, internationally known. When someone asks you to just describe kind of the, the wide scope of, of the students that you educate, what, what is your response to that? So we have a couple of uh, very core themes that we everything revolves around, and they're basically public service and public safety. So those are the two things that every one of our programs tie to in one way or another. Uh, we actually only have a, a small number of majors when you really get down to it. I could name them in a few seconds. It's criminal justice, forensic science, fire science, which has a few things like fire protection engineering. Uh, we have the national security program, which has some brand new degrees that we might be able to talk about in a couple of minutes. Uh, and then at the graduate level, we also have criminal justice, forensic science. We have a PhD program in criminal justice. The others are all master's programs also in the fire science area. We have freestanding programs, which is the Masters of Public Administration uh, and the Masters of Investigation, which is again at the master's level, a graduate level, uh, and national security. So it's really only, a, a, you know, only about eight different degree programs at graduate and undergraduate. Uh, and uh, you know, we are the largest undergraduate uh, program on the campus. Yeah, what is it about the Lee College, do you think, that attracts students from not only all over the country, but all over the world to come here. Yeah, so we talked to them a lot about that. We're going through uh, you know, the uh, open houses and the cycle of recruitment and accepted student days are coming up and we talked to them about being part of the mission. Our students are very mission focused. They want to have meaningful lives, they want to have meaningful careers, they want to have an impact and we can demonstrate how graduates of the programs uh, in the Lee College, like other colleges, but we have a very special niche, I think we, uh, we, we do. Uh, and it is that they wanna have an impact and they wanna have a meaningful uh, career that's going to help. And so they're the ones that wanna serve others. They're the ones that want to enhance public safety for all of us. So let's talk about, before we forget, those programs that you wanted to mention. So is that, is, is that your uh, uh, basically, it's national security? Yeah, so the national security is the department, yep. and we had a graduate master's, rather, in national security and an undergraduate program in national security. And what we found over time was that uh, we were a little bit um, behind the curve. We always like to keep up on uh, market research, what's going on, and like that. And so we split the undergraduate national security program into a number of specific programs. So we have Homeland Security, which was actually tied into the fire science program and we brought it over here. We have intelligence analysis for those who want to work for the intelligence agencies in particular. Uh, we have international affairs, which is a very closely aligned with the political science department and it's more of a policy level uh, group. And then there is uh, the defense policy, uh, security and defense policy uh, program which is also fairly self-explanatory. So we took the national security area that was a little bit too generic at the undergraduate level and we broke it up into uh, more specific 
competencies and skill sets that lead to students getting jobs in specific sectors. That is so cool. Yeah, that's what it's all about is, you know, you come to college, you want to get a job. Certainly the students want that, parents want that. Off the top of your head, what is the placement rate for students who come through the Lee College and getting into the workforce? So we're right up there with the, you know, the high end of the university's average, and it's in the low 90s. We, you know, the, the metric is, you know, within six months of graduation, do you have a job in your field? Uh, however the student defines it, it's a subjective, you know, question for them. Uh, and so we're very proud of, and it includes, by the way, it's jobs. Uh, it's if you're an undergraduate that you got into graduate school. It's military service and other kinds of things like the police, uh, the uh, Peace Corps or AmeriCorps. It's so cool too when you see. So we've got the we've got the room that's the crime scene. Yeah. You know, I see students working in there. And then one time, J Dub, I'm walking back to the radio station, and I see a student sitting over there in the corner, and uh, I'm kind of like, uh, you know, just sitting on a wall. I'm like, uh, can I help you? And she said, I'm conducting surveillance. <laughs> and I was like, this is cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is so is that a, is what percentage of what you're doing is a lot of it kind of trying to get hands on. Yeah. And I know we really have a lot of faculty that have worked or are working in their fields now. Yeah. So we're at, very much uh, our faculty leans into those who have had at least half, if not an entire career doing the work that we're training students to go into. And then we do have a significant number of our faculty that are more what you might refer to as the pure academics, especially in the CJ program where we have uh, you know, a PhD program. That's much more of a requirement for that. Um, and so we're very heavily into that. And so that supports our curriculum, which is very experiential education. Uh, and there's a lot of hands-on learning in addition to the internship program and the co-op program and other kinds of things with field placements of one sort or another. Many of our classes uh, involve the students doing things like that. We have a crime prevention through environmental design class, for example, where students go out in the, on the campus or might work in the community and actually design, uh, redesign structures or redesign traffic flow or whatever the environment might be in an effort to uh, prevent and reduce crime. You see on, in TV and movies all the CSI stuff. Is that is that really what it's like, or is that just Hollywood showing us what that that type of life is like working in a crime lab, let's say, so, or, or you know doing a, a crime scene investigation? So largely, it is just Hollywood, uh, and that's one of the things we talk to the students right off the bat, especially when they come into open houses. It's you know you're not going to be the bench scientist with your test tubes and your Bunsen burners, and then you're going to slap on your badge <laughs> and your gun and you know go out there and you know and they're very distinct things, and in fact. Uh, many of our students, uh, you know, won't go into pure uh, law enforcement careers where they become, you know, sworn law enforcement officers and like that. They go into social services. There's a lot of private security and, uh, you know, other government sector as well as private sector work that relies on the ability to be thoughtful and analytical uh, and also, you know, violence and crime and uh, other kinds of behaviors are not just uh, limited to what a police officer might be involved or an investigator might be involved in pursuing. So J-Dub, do you think we should get to know Mario a little more? Because he's got an interesting he's a, story. He's an excellent storyteller. I'll let you start. Well, which one? I'm trying to figure <laughs> out. It's like working for Ronald Reagan. <laughs> or your great-great-great-grandfather, the hero in Manitoba. J-Dub, well, you make the call, which right. one of those? So actually, we'll, we'll start, I actually want to go a different direction, we'll, we'll double back there, because okay. I think, as Mario said, his relationship to the University of New Haven, you said 30 years, but your family's relationship to this, oh, that's the to this place, yeah. it goes back even further. Tell us that story. Yeah. So the family relationship through my grandmother and great aunt, uh, and uncles, actually, and great-grandmother go back uh, about 100 years, really about around the time of the founding of the university, which was not on the West Haven campus, because we didn't get here till 1960. We were uh, a night school uh, at, uh, on the campus of Yale University back in 1920, in the early 1920s. But long story short, my great-grandmother immigrated here from Italy, and she actually worked uh, in New Haven. She was married, and uh, she came over in 1912, and by 1920 had six, six kids. Uh, her husband, my great-grandfather, died at that point in time, and she couldn't manage all the kids. Uh, she put them in a, a county receiving home. 
uh, and had my great aunt, who at that time when we did that interview was 100 years old, she's passed away since then, uh, but she was an infant, so she stayed at home, uh, and uh, the other children were in accounting receiving home. Well, I didn't find out until I ended up working at the University of New Haven, and I spoke to my grandmother, told her I was at the University of New Haven, and she said, is that that building that's on the hill in West Haven? <laughs> uh, and I said, yes, it is. And then we first heard the story of how that, Maxie Hall, was the county receiving home for New Haven, and either orphan children or children who couldn't be with their parent at the time were housed there, and so she was there. So when I walked down the halls of Maxie, I never know if that was a hall that my grandmother, as a child, in nine, she was born in 1912, so in 1920, 21, she was eight or nine years old, and she would have been walking the halls of the county receiving home, which is Maxie Hall. Amazing. Yeah. All right, now I make the choice. The next one I want to hear about the great, great, great grandfather, <laughs> the hero in Manitoba. So my uh, ethnic heritage is split half Italian, and that's the side we just talked mm -hmm. about, emigrating yep. from basically the Caserta, Italy, Naples area. Uh, in around 17, the early 1700s, uh, maybe the late 1690s, uh, the Gabri family emigrates from France to Canada. I'm French Canadian on the other half. So a great, 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 how many times removed <laughs> uncle slash cousin uh, was uh, a, uh, a person who, first of all, my great, 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 great grandmother, um, who was uh, Ann, uh, Marie Ann Gabbery, actually was one of the earliest settlers up there that negotiated treaties with the native people in uh, and helped to found Manitoba. Wow. And her, uh, her nephew, which that's how it would have worked into my relationship, uh, was uh, the fellow who actually stood up for the native population in Canada against the Canadian government at that point in time. And uh, because of his quote unquote insurrection against the Canadian government, he was actually hung uh, for insurrection. So later on, as more enlightened Canadian governments came to pass, uh, they actually um, exonerated him posthumously. Didn't do him much good, but it was great for the family name to not have uh, that uh, associated with it. Uh, and in fact, they have a big uh, hero's day for him in Manitoba every year. Road and trip. It's, it's kind of a big deal. <laughs> we should go. We should go. Oh, we would be welcome. Like well, we actually had a speaker oh. here, and we had a speaker here a couple of years ago, toward the end of the pandemic, uh, who was... Um, I'm, the name of the native tribe is escaping me right now, but it may come sometime during the interview. He was a descendant of that tribe, and he came here to talk about you know, uh, minorities and disaffected people in one of our speaker series. And Declan Hill, who you know and probably should interview for this podcast at some point if you haven't. Oh, we have. He, <laughs> uh, you know, he, he invited the guy, and he said, oh, you should meet Mario because his you know, uncle is uh, this fellow. And the guy was like, you're kidding me. He takes a f s selfie of us. It's plastered all over his social media up there that he actually met, you know, met a descendant. That's amazing. I know. I know. Uh, and uh, President Reagan. Well, so the President Reagan story, story is pretty straightforward, and it's uh, in large part how I ended up where my career was and how I ended up here. So President Reagan commissioned something called the... Uh, uh, Crime Victims Task Force, the President's Task Force on Victims of Crime, back in, I believe it was 1982 or 1984, uh, and it ended up creating the establishment of the Federal Crime Victims Office mm -hmm. in the Department of Justice that began uh, working on all the legislation that now protects crime victims on funding mechanisms for crime victims programs. My background is as a victimologist, my PhD dissertation was on child abuse and neglect, and uh, as I was working for a victim advocacy organization in Washington, uh, I became acquainted with the people who were starting this new office, and so I ended up being hired in uh, as the deputy director of this brand new office for victims of crime, and I worked uh, that in Washington, D.C. for a couple of years as the deputy director of that office. Wow. And so that ended up taking me from being more on the psychology side of all this, uh, to the public policy and the legal side of it, which is how I ended up getting a law degree, becoming a lawyer, being called by the previous dean of the college to come here and teach criminal justice. So it all, it all, it all looks Perfect. really, yeah. really organized when you look backwards. <laughs> it really but does, yeah. It's totally random. 
Well, that's how you do a podcast, right? In terms of storytelling, and nobody better than Mario Gabbery. <laughs> big <dean>. close. <laughs> big close. Big close. And we're taking the road trip to Manitoba. Yes. You where we're going to be treated like, like royalty. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's right. I think we should uh, probably pack the, the warm clothing. If, uh, if we go in the summertime, we might be okay. No, that's, that's much right. better. Let's go in the summer. Yeah. Okay, done. <laughs> road trip. Can't wait. Mario, thanks for being here on Charger 360. Terrific. Great. It was a great experience. Thank you. Yep, we promised a great storyteller, and he certainly is. Mario no Gabbery, worry. the dean of the Henry C. Lee College of Criminal Justice and Forensic Science. And that'll wrap up this edition of Charger 360, telling the stories of the University of New Haven. For Mario, for Bruce, I'm Jay Dub. See you next time.